chapter one. Before I start it all, I would like to get ahead with some of what you might be thinking. I have nothing to gain to go public about this at all. I have better things to do with my life than create lies that could potentially hurt people. I am mortified of posting this talking about someone with a platform as huge as swims. I am talking about very personal things that I am ashamed of seeing publicly shared. Some of my in real life friends are gonna learn about all of this reading through and I can't imagine the shock they are gonna go through and the overwhelming flow I might have to go through as well. But I feel in my heart that it's the right thing to do. First, for the other women and people who I know have suffered from crossing his road. Second, for the other women and people who might suffer if they cross his road. And finally, to find peace myself. I don't know if it may help me, but I feel like I have the responsibility to spread awareness and I am tired of seeing dangerous men being leaders of gaming communities. After this goes public, I don't know how I will re react. I might need time off, I may try to act like nothing happened and just keep on playing and streaming, because hell, I want my power and happiness back. I'm asking you to not judge what I decide to do or not to do afterwards. Thank you for reading. TW for emotional and sexual abuse. Drug use. I am M MV. I'm 25 years old. I live in Paris, France, and I always have. I play and stream Legends of Runeterra. It's been two weeks since Mim and I last talked, but seeing him back on Twitch at the end of March made me feel bad, angry, and most importantly, unsafe. I want to talk to you about my experience dating Swim, also known as Swimster. I'm not here to talk about how bad he was at being a boyfriend, as he seemed to have claimed many times on Twitch and Twitter. It's okay to just be a bad partner. Trust me, there's a lot I'm keeping from posting in this paper because this is just private and will remain because there is no need to share. I speak in my truth because I've been manipulated, gaslighted, used and abused in some ways. And even if it was only for a few months, I'm still dealing with a lot of damages still. For the record, I'm not sure Swim realizes he does that, and this is one of the reasons that I didn't make him take him responsible for that at first. Some things make me think he does, some don't. I don't think he has mental illness, but this should never excuse what he did to me. Being ill never is an excuse for being abusive and manipulating a vulnerable person. I think he can be dangerous, and I've experienced this. This is why for me, he needs to be called out, taken away from the internet for as much time as he needs to learn, and finally work on changing and still being a danger to others and potentially himself. I want to be very clear that I don't want anyone to target him with hate. It wouldn't help at all, and despite everything, I'm pretty sure he is an ill person. And cyberbullying, a cyberbullying him wouldn't do good to anyone, and would definitely not help him. <coughs> on the 11th of April, Swim decided to go live and talk more about what made him feel bad. The word was deleted, but some of my friends got it saved. He decided to name me, that name me in front of 1300 plus people. Not only he made this case public, but talked about me and gave my identity to all of his viewers. I am now being followed by a lot of people, probably waiting for me to reply to what he said on his stream. People are asking me to give context. This is honestly super stressful. It is 3.46 am in France. I am outraged and sick to my stomach and feel like he tried to control the potential damage of me going public with my story. Also brought it up before I was even feeling ready to do it and this is so unfair. He talked about how I was trying to get him cancelled and I would like to give you more info about this. First of all, I started talking about all of this to close friends only during the past week to 10 days because realizing what I've been through was a lot to handle. I had an amazing support system, and the more I talked, the more there were things to add to the list. I like to say that I never threatened to swim to go public with anything. I indeed questioned myself about doing it for awareness, but never ever the info went out of my safe space, a safe place. But as he was contacting a lot of common friends to try to get as much information as possible, he got that rumor from I don't know where. All of my friends have started speaking out without giving much details out of frustration and support. I'm not mad at them. I'm sorry they might have to deal with the flow of people asking for questions. I'm sorry they were, they were ever involved. This led to the, this Twitter shitstorm. I'm thankful for them, not saying anything on my behalf until I was ready. Obviously I'm not, but I want to defend my name as well and get my story out there, even if now it feels rushed. <clears throat> when it all started, Chapter 2. I started talking with Swim in the beginning of November 
second, third ish, despite first DMing him one year and a half before. He didn't follow me at the time and his ex reached out letting me know that she saw my message, sent a lame pickup line as a joke, but with a friend, never thinking anyone would see this. I did not know he was dating someone and felt awful. When he eventually followed back and was single again, we started talking. We quickly started to chat as long as we could throughout the day, keeping each other up late at night despite our 9 hours time difference. About around 4 days after talking, he then asked me about me flying to LA to go to the arcade event with him. I was honestly not only so surprised by the invite, but also very honored he would grant me his trust right away. Talking about it to friends, they were all like, are you really trusting him? And the answer was yes. Something felt safe about this guy. Something felt like it was just interesting and I liked how spontaneous he was. And that maybe that's what I needed in my life to be more happy. Stop planning and accept life as it comes. Also, it was quite the crazy ride. It's hard to say no to such an event. It might sound stupid from my hand. To be honest, I've dealt with sexual ab abuse in the past, yet I still want to believe that not every man will assault me while still being careful. I just don't want to stop living my life because I think that they should be the one not assaulting and not me not leaving my house. But I still happen to have been abused still. I actually talked to him about this trauma and my experiences very soon in the relationship as a way to protect myself and make sure he understands how I need to feel safe. I still asked if he had any expectations to make things clear. He said no. I had to clarify if I was talking about sex, to which I said yes. Uh, I don't know how to pull it, so please don't take it seriously. I just want to make sure you don't have any pre precise expectations. It's awful asking that. Not that I'm not interested in you, I just asked because I already felt trapped with someone and felt unsafe. I know if you get what I mean. So you were talking about sex, right? I was. Our language barely makes it pretty risky to not be super clear. I decided. <laughs> just wanted to make sure. He then said that it was all okay and that it, we could even have different beds or rooms if I felt like it. Which made me feel so safe, especially when he keeps going with this. Speaking of which, it's really funny to me that you were worried about sex. I mean, I completely understand that it's a smart precaution because of before a big plan, but I'm almost a virgin. With this, I'm just trying to show that he really helped trying to make me feel comfortable by saying he was not that much into sex anyway. Chapter 3 Sexual Encounters, Pressure and Abuse Swim and Dean made me feel safe at first. This is why despite me not being able to make it to the LA Arcane event, I decided to book a trip to Seattle to visit him during Christmas break after one month of talking, which would be meeting in real life after two months of chatting online. But suddenly things changed a bit, but his words of reassurance towards sex and the bad experiences and traumas I had in this, in this regards couldn't leave my mind. So it was honestly hard for my brain to process that he could do anything harmful. But even if he really did not want to harm me, he did. And this is what really matters. We kept on talking more, but he was planning his huge stream comeback, so we were adjusting our schedule and getting used to talk less, but I was okay with it. The feelings were still there, they grew more and more actually, so we started telling each other that we loved one another, but decided we would decide that what we are officially, once we meet and see how it goes. Because there's always this risk with long distance relationships of being disappointed. I had a long distance relationship in the past, but never ever something with someone outside of friends by the way. If you told me that I would have one year ago, I would have probably laughed at you. Eventually things got heated. First through sexting, which I was comfortable with, then on Discord, then on video call. And that's where I first started feeling uncomfortable. He would ask insistently for me to turn the camera on without me wanting to do it and expressing it, telling how it would turn him on, how I didn't have to show too much, while having his on without me asking him to show anything though. Eventually I did. I would ask for more. The more we would do it, the more I would feel comfortable, and we would do it often, but he never respected the fact that from the start I was uncomfortable doing that, yet he pushed through to get what he wanted. I think I've seen his penis for the first time while never asking for it. I remember not being sure how I felt about it. A lot of mixed feelings happened. 
It was more and more frequent. I said no often because I'm just not horny 24 7. I remember having my first breakdown and bursting into tears over this for the first time pretty early in the relationship. He knew about the sexual abuse I've been through, and once I've been super clear with my no, it was a sharp one. A negative no. Not that I should precise because no means no. A very clear no. He told me that when I was telling him no, I should do it in a sexy, teasing way. It was honestly so insensitive for me to hear, I explained that to him that this was how I got trapped many times. I always felt bad for saying no to a man, and that I always was using a soft voice for this reason, that it was often seen as a yes in a disguise. Which seemed fucked up, in my opinion, that I was being more clear from now on to affirm myself more and protect myself. He felt unhappy and sad about that, saying that I didn't have to say it firmly, that he would understand if I played along. I had to play it around in a sexy and teasing way to satisfy him again. I had to make this effort, despite, despite my trauma, for him to get satisfaction. You want to know what's worse than this? You want to know what's worse than this? I agree. Despite all of me, my convictions and values, I tried. Because I was scared of losing him and his love. But spoilers, it never worked. Either on virtual calls or in real life, I would try to use no horny as a safe word, but would say yes, no horny. And then still get on top on me while I was visiting him in the US, pretending humping on me was not a sexual act at all. He would not listen to my no, he would still try, insist, until I had to say it many many times for it to stop, until I get sad. For the record I explained to him my boundaries many times, so many fucking times. I'm not always in the mood, how he needs to ask first, how we can start something and I can just change my mind, to which he said, what no, if we st- what no? We start, we need to finish, by the way. Once I was feeling very depressed, I called him while I was babysitting and the kid was sleeping in his room. Out of the blue he stood his penis out and started stroking it. I was shocked, he knew. He just knew he couldn't do stuff like this without asking. I told him already. I don't remember if I cried, but I was utterly sad and angry as well. He ended up crying, saying he just tried to help me, to make me feel better. I was the one who had to cheer him up in the end. This is how he got me. Every time I would call him out on something problematic or hurtful he would say or do to me, he would cry or turn it into him, into how he is the one in pain, how he suffers and how no one really understands him. It's just that he is different. I was the one trying to make him feel better. I slowly erased myself. He guilt tripped me, which made it impossible to express the way I felt about his behavior. TW, sexual abuse. No, he didn't rape me. He did other things though. He would make me touch his penis at any moment, all the time. He would also touch me, grab me, get on top of me, hump on me with a weird lure look and eyes wide open. This sound that I can still see and hear that is scaring me so much now. He said there was nothing sexual in me touching him like this sometimes. It relieved the pain. Said how his balls really hurt and the only way to feel better was coming. I felt so bad, he even said many times, jokingly but still, that it was my fault. We went on a date once, the only one we really had alone together without his roommate. Went to the cinema and I was excited to have food with him afterwards. Turns out he couldn't walk, he would make noises of deep pain. He seemed to suffer a lot. I was honestly so concerned and felt guilty. He would say, it's not you, don't worry. Yet he would also say things like, Coming would make me feel so much better, and it's your fault for not wanting to touch it. He used my love and feelings for him to make me feel guilty and hope to have sex favors, and would always use humor as a cover-up whenever I would start to look sad or angry. I felt bad because I've heard about this blue balls thing, but without being able to experience it, I cannot really judge if the pain can be this extreme. But I've been talking about it with some friends who think this is all bullshit, cannot be that extreme. Please remember that this day he actually got to call his roommate for him to pick us back up because he couldn't walk or do anything. I was freaking out, I even told him to see a doctor. He even told, he then told me that I should just touch his dick, petting it, stroking slowly, without it being sexual. We would talk while we would have been, we would talk while he would have me touching him. Which, when I think about it, was pretty much still sexual because he was into this kind of stuff. 
doing sexual things while doing other stuff or being ignored while doing sex. We tried that way and it was still not enough for him, because he then told me how it was not helping, how he still needed to finish, how can this be not sexual. He told me that it was hard for him to deal with the fact that I wouldn't want to jerk him off or let him masturbate when I don't want to, because his ex-girlfriends would let him masturbate next to them in bed even when they did not want to have sex or take part in. And it felt weird to me. I did not want that. Thinking about it now, he knew I would compare myself to one of his ex and feel bad about myself, and I can't help but wonder if it was just a way to make me compete and then try to make me feel bad so I would accept on doing such things. It made me feel bad, thinking about that call incident, which he tried to do many times but didn't fully try because I was like, Swim, what are you doing? And he was like, no, nothing. What are you talking about? I wouldn't stop touching his penis. So it was either he would masturbate next to me without me wanting to see this, or either me touching him while not wanting to do it, or either me putting him into deep pain in his balls, basically. Swim, I think you know you've always had a problem with caring about people the way they care about you. I've been your friend for what, five years now? And we don't talk much, but you know I know you. I've changed a lot in the last year about all that. Now it feels like I care too much in some days. I don't know. You haven't really talked to him. I wouldn't know anything that's different. We haven't, really. You're always busy. I know you don't really have reasons for changing how you think about me, but I'm really not the same. I'm not passing sweeping judgment on you. I just know that in the past you've not been great to your girlfriends, and maybe Amve just wasn't happy in that. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a big problem for me in the past. I think I do need to care less. No, I think that means you need to care more. Here is him admitting he has not been correct with his ex-girlfriends in the past, share with Kelly's consent. I would also wake up often to him humping against my body. It made me cry at some point. I even told him that it felt, I felt unsafe with him. This is what he told me. It's not me doing this. I'm just feeling great and mostly asleep. I don't mean to hurt you. He said he would sleep his head facing my feet on the bed so this wouldn't happen again. I didn't want that. I wanted him to control himself. He said it was the only way and that he did not and that he did not want to risk making me feel unsafe again. So he did it one night. We got back to normal after that. He then once started doing it very slowly, then stopped right away after I moved away and it never happened again. He then entered into a period of few days of ignoring me and showing no interest in me whatsoever. I cried so much. I tried to talk to him and he told me that since I told him that I didn't feel safe anymore, he felt uncomfortable around me. And I wasn't sure that he was feeling... I wasn't sure what he was feeling. Again. He is the one with the abusive behavior, but he is the one acting like the victim and making me the bad guy. He wouldn't show it to other people though. When we were outside or when we played one of his favorite games with his roomie and a common close friend, what an awful day it was. I was hopeful again. Then, when the call would end, and we wouldn't be playing all together anymore, he would stop caring again. Chapter 4 Emotional Abuse, Manipulation and Narcissism I realized that I said to everyone that I was happy while I was dating Swim. It was such bullshit. I was in serious denial. It was also super hard to reach out to people for that case. Whenever I felt something was off, I just felt like a complete idiot. How could I DM someone after telling them, Oh, everything is going well. I'm happy with him. I was also so deeply scared of changing anyone's perception of him and disappointing them. I was scared of hurting Swim's image so I wouldn't reach anyone. I was honestly scared of reaching friends because I felt dumb. Dumb for flying across the planet and expecting things to go well. I just felt like people would mock me. I would feel like I was honestly living in my own bubble and his desire for devoted, perfect, supportive girlfriend was isolating me. Realizing all of this was a shock. I'm sharing here a list of events that happened. And in few of the things I felt, I might be thinking with a few steps back, but it's nowhere near the chaotic feelings I'm now experiencing. I also want to put out that when we 
he first showed interest in me. I told him I hoped he wasn't going for me for the wrong reasons, knowing he was so freshly broken up with his ex. Told me that it was not the case, only to learn recently that he was talking with someone before me, and that after me he reached out to other girls really quick as well. I am mentally ill. There is a reason I was so perfect for him, and it is because I am very vulnerable. I am and was at the same time dealing with the depression, anxiety and eating disorders. And I just recently got di diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which makes a lot of sense on why I refuse to see the red flags. I was so desperate for his love and approval and so scared of him abandoning me, and he knew that. He could see that in me. I was an easy target. Manipulators can feel that. He knew he could change me into the puppet he was looking for. It's, I guess, very connected to the idea of how I see expressions of devotion in romantic relationships, for me at least. I guess it's kind of weird and fairly specific things that I really want in a relationship. One of my problems has always been that it makes me uncomfortable to ask for things that I want, and it often leads to relationships where I'm unfulfilled. There are certain kinds of actions or gestures that mean the world to me. I guess it would be best for me to talk about this kind of thing more openly. It's really hard for me to feel truly cared for by another person. I guess for me, I can be kind of, not needy, but like requiring very specific kind of things for emotional support maybe. Like, oh, you're a picky eater. I sort of need to be really 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 emotionally important to the other person like a pretty crazy amount of love but not just that I sort of needed to be shown in specific kinds of ways as well it's I think a bit much for most people I actually told him I saw that as toxic when my partners wanted to change me or my personality they hurt me in the past when I was on a walk with him in real life, he stopped and took 20 minutes to explain to me how important it was to him to be able to change his partner. Not in the way that I thought, but that it was in a good way. For them to feel and be better, he honestly thought he would be some kind of savior, I think. He used his edgy way with words to make it seem like I had to be special to understand him, but that it was okay and he was just different and he just wanted good for me. Honestly, there were a lot of words used, and remember that English is not my first language. It was just very confusing to me. I just looked into his eyes and felt like I was giving him my all. I was granting this man with all of my trust to make me into what he wanted me to be, because I never liked myself anyway. Well, there was definitely resistance from my part in the start of the relationship, but he was patient. He waited and knew when to strike, and he was able to get into my head and change me. I feel like he erased my personality at some point. I honestly feel like he can get inside my head as he wants. It's so scary. I just won't control that. It was just easy and fun for him to play with me. I was the perfect target because I was vulnerable and sick. Trust me, at some point I would be okay with it. I was just done. Resisting, especially during intimacy. And would ask him if he wanted to have full control of me. To which he would say yes. I just feel like I was okay with it. He tried to convince me to stay. He wanted me to quit my studies. I mean, for two more years with school and work. And just find a job here and live with him. I didn't. But I was indeed considering finishing this year and dropping to join him next, next, center, next September. So that studies and diplomas did not really matter anyway. That America was better and that I could make a lot of money here and live the life. He also gave what seems to be an awful way to me to make and grind money that I won't be sharing here. He also shamed me for the way I valued money and the way I would make savings and be scared and care for the high cost things I own, not realizing that as I'm still studying I only have a very low salary. I'm so happy the rational part of me won over me, because that was not only fucking exhausting for me to do all the research alone on this, but it was also fucking crazy to consider. Thank god I was lucid enough. Chapter 5 Having Multiple Personalities <coughs> This is something he talked about pretty early in the relationship. I'm conflicted. Carry on. 
I won't have enough time to fully explain tonight. It's very complicated, and I need to fix my sleep schedule, but... I guess... What would you think if I told you I had multiple different people inside of me? Like... A multiple personality disorder? Schizophrenia? Hmm... Something like that? Not quite, maybe. Is this what makes you so conflicted about all of this? Is there a part of you that is not okay with everything? That's what I'm trying to figure out. The way he explained it to me was like this. He said that sometimes he would switch. But some days he would be the guy I would describe, the one who ignored my messages, who wouldn't make time for me, who ignored me even in real life. He said that this version of him didn't love me. It would be the guy who would be focused on his work and nothing else. I honestly have no idea if this is true or not, but I believed him for as long as we last spoke. I now think he made it up and is probably a pathological liar and is probably in his own bubble thinking his own lies are true now. This is just my assumption. It just maybe felt like the right way to handle things with me for him whenever he was bored by my presence. Those days felt honestly awful. He did it so many times and I thought that I had to accept it because maybe it was part of an illness he had and that I should accept him as who he was. Actually, I just remembered that at some point that I felt so bad for him, ignoring me while I was visiting him, that I even used sex as a way to get him back. He was mad for some reason, or sad? I'm not sure. Wouldn't talk to me, ignore me, won't have any interest, but sex war. It may be a shortcut, but you can't blame me for thinking that maybe it was his plan all along. For someone who was not that much into sex, he honestly was much into it. Thinking about it with a step back, it seems like he just said that to make me feel safe, which was pretty predatory to me. He would actually say that he did not know he was that much into sex, that I was the one giving him this effect. But I don't buy this at all, not anymore, not that I know how he talked to others. Not after seeing how openly he talked about porn to his community. Not after him telling me he would masturbate almost every day. I'm just not buying it. This was straight up lying and borderline predatory. About other mental illnesses, he probably played that card too. For example, I warned him of me never gonna be his mom or caretaker, yet I found myself cleaning up his room and begging him to take a shower after one week of not taking it. For the record, we were very sick after New Year's Eve and we stayed in bed feeling super ill for three days, I think. I know those two details are symptoms of depression that I did not want to minimize or shame. But when it comes to basic hygiene, when he was having intimacy with me, it was hard to deal with. He would say stuff like, What? You don't like my natural smell? But I like yours. You don't like it? And then would put his arm in the air and try to get my head on his armpit for me to smell him. I felt guilty. It was honestly hard to handle. Chapter 6. Too busy to be a boyfriend. He was always too busy, you know, with streaming and stuff. I was always... was so understanding. But lately, someone I care about and who I was afraid to talk to told me that yet he was busy, but not enough to not be a friend, and it clicked. Swim so was making excuses to not care about me or my day, because he just did not care at all. He never, never asked, or very rarely, how I was doing. He would wake up when I stopped my working day and would start his streams early. Never would ask how things were going or how was my day. He also always told me if he ever felt bad, it would ruin his day and he couldn't stream, which made it really hard for me to have a place to share my feelings. I did not want to ruin his day, so I would wait for his streams to end. But yeah, sometimes they would just not end and I would have to sleep. Sometimes they would end but Mr. would get horny, you know. He was not, by the way, I know what he would do. If he had time to play TFT, he definitely had time to check up on me. Not even the bare fucking minimum. I honestly wish this part was the only thing I had to be upset about. Chapter 7. Pushing my boundaries. It def was definitely not only with sex, but with everything. He would put me in an uncomfortable situation on the edge just to observe my reaction and see if I would react as he wished I would. TW eating disorders. He did that with food a lot, he knew I had eating disorders, and one of them is a complicated one that I still have a hard time explaining. 
But long story short, I'm terribly afraid of eating things I never tried before. I'm not afraid of throwing up, but I'm afraid of the feeling of disgust it could give me. He made me try things in restaurants many times, knowing it was hard for me. I almost had panic attacks doing so, yet he was looking at me like I was his little experimental subject, smiling like he was proud of me looking for his approbation. I would eat stuff with veggies on it and it would require me to have very small binds and to try very hard not to think so I wouldn't throw up. He often tried to choose my dishes at restaurants and I got to influence one of them. Try to insist a lot into me ordering Brussels sprouts for weeks of me being here. I said no repetitively. He finished by ordering them and made me try. It was honestly very hard. Chapter 8 Fake Complimenting Swim would try to compliment me a lot on my body, but it was always twisty. First it was with my hair. I showed him a picture of me with my long hair before I had to cut it short because of the bleach damage it did to my hair. He asked me why I cut it and told me I was way prettier with long hair. I always felt ugly with short hair, but what he said made me feel awful, to the point where I started wearing hair extensions to stream. Then with my boobs. I slid the info that my boobs were small when we started having those more heated calls and he said that he of course noticed and that I felt bad. He said that small boobs were the best and everyone's favorite, only later to say it was always a joke that no man likes small breasts and everyone likes big tits. I cried and felt awful again and he said he was again joking. He made a joke again when I was with him in real life. He also said how much he loved my body, especially how thick I am. But he would sometimes add how I would be perfect with 5 pounds less. Not that I needed it though, but still. He knew I wanted so badly to lose weight and how I hate my body. He would often say to me how sexy I was and that he understood how it was important for me to lose weight, but it was not needed. And why tell me this kind of stuff? My bulimia got worse when I got back to France. I gained back 5 kilograms and my issue with self-image is worse than ever now, and it's probably linked. He would often bring things to my body when we would be in the middle of a cute moment. The romance would be interrupted by him talking about my butt, breasts or private parts. He would then say things like, I hope you don't think this is the only thing I like about you, and that I only care about sex. I wonder now. Talking about what he liked about me, well... When I asked, he would say things like, I like how you're always cheerful and understanding with me. I'm happy you like the things I like. I like that you do the things I asked you to try despite your fears. Which leads me to the next point. Chapter 9. Narcissism. My wish to be supportive of him turned into becoming obsessed with him when I realized that's what he liked from me. This was such a vicious cycle. While I was still in France, I would wake up sometimes earlier to have a little time to hang out with him in the morning. I would hope he wouldn't want to have anything sex related because I missed hanging out. Sometimes I even woke up earlier to be able to call him before school or work. I would go back home and hang out in his Discord and in his Twitch chat because he told me how happy he was when he saw me in it. That's pretty much it. That's how my days would look like. I didn't stream, did not play, I would hang out on his discord throughout the days and people like me there. That's where he saw the potential in me about community management and content, I guess. Kaluneta. Good, I can't believe how long ago that was. Did it freak you out when like thousands of people started watching you stream? Hmm, not really. It was pretty neat. So you were just like ultra hype? Yeah, it was pretty poggers. I'm fairly narcissistic, so I kinda get off to attention. He at least knows about that. I just isolated myself slowly. When I broke up with him in early February, February, we stayed very close, even closer than before TBH. But after a few weeks, I stopped chasing after him and I realized the same pattern was growing again. It was over. I streamed again, popped off on Twitter and made a bunch of new friends. This is not a coincidence at all. He didn't tell me to not interact with anyone, but he wanted me all to himself. He wanted me to be obsessed with him, and he told me many times. Chapter 10. Trying to get me back. And this is why he came back. He noticed I was better off without him, which probably led him to think that he was holding me back from happiness. 
And I think he can't stand this. I think he'd rather see me unhappy with him than happy without him. These are just assumptions. I think he wasn't expecting to see me grow my audience without his help, which he might have thought he felt necessary for. He offered to help with raids many times, but I was afraid of so much exposure. I only agreed once after being on his streams multiple times. About being on his lives. I felt like his chat liked my presence somehow. Yet he always made me feel bad about my behavior on his channel. Like I was not good enough. During the reveal season he even DM'd me I'm suffering without more context while we were still both live. It was so fucking stressful. I had to keep up the good face still because I knew he wanted to rate me after that. He would suddenly ask about how I'm doing, how was my day doing, how was I up to, and was burning with love for me and eventually would go wild with stuff like this. I want to say that at this point he was often calling me saying how awful and sad he felt. He was in an awful place mentally. He often repeated how much he loved me and as much as I tried to avoid it, I sometimes said it too, not really knowing if I meant it. I was just scared and lost, and I regret it. Here's the last combo, convo we had after he took a stream break and stopped messaging me. I really love you, MV. So much. I love you too, Swim. Let's get married. Haha, <laughs> I don't think that's a very reasonable thing to do. Why not? Are you really being serious? Mostly. I mean... Okay, I don't know about like right now, but I'm just saying, I woke up this morning thinking I wanna kiss you in a wedding dress, Sunday. I'm sorry I'm not responding, I'm trying to process this. I never stop lying you. I'm sorry I'm taking time, I'm just feeling a lot of emotions right now. Are you there? Yeah. I'm sorry that my reaction might disappoint you. Oh. Mm, it's okay. I wasn't expecting much. Dot dot dot. Have a nice day. Hey, Envy. I hope everything goes really good for you. If I come to France, can I live with you? Did you just come up with this idea? I was looking through my pictures of you and I really wanted to come to France suddenly. I don't know. It never crossed your mind in the past. It was always about me coming here. It did cross my mind many times. I just never talked about it much. Why is that? I'm not sure. I guess I think about many things that I don't say. You might see someone confessing his love and trying to get his lover back. What I see is a crazy amount of love bombing, which never happened in the time we were together. It just seemed like a way to try to regain my love and affection. Chapter 11. Making me feel dumb. I feel like he constantly tried to make me feel dumb by showing off how smart he was. He constantly had to show me how to do this or that. Same with games. We only once played the Lord together with the part of champions and I had fun. He told me he didn't like playing with his girlfriends because it usually makes him hate them. It was also this joke he made on Twitter. At Swinstream. Are you proud? If you get the Masters this season, I'll shave my head. He admitted that he said that while, of course, knowing I couldn't make it. He was always conflicted about whether or not he believed in me at any point. Also, he made it very clear that he didn't have any interest in any of my hobbies, passion or work whatsoever. It was all about him, anyway. Chapter 12. Lying and Trust He made it clear how trust was so important to him, and while we were an official before I visited him, we still expressed our desire to be in a monogamous relationship together which he expressed was hard for him to. I think, for me, being cheated on was so painful, because I only found out after it had been going on for a full year. The painful thing wasn't even really cheat the cheating, it was the lying. I understand, completely. I can't live up with lies at all. I even felt bad not telling you about the guy talking about you, but I was scared it would make you feel bad. That's why I kept it for me. Hey. I want to be monogamous with you. Oh my god, like this? I just felt like you would, right now? I told him that technically I couldn't be mad at him for seeing someone until we meet and decide with boyfriend and girlfriend. He used this opportunity to tell me this. TBH, I've never actually been monogamous before exactly. I mean, I've never had sex with somebody else when in a relationship, but I've also never really had the opportunity. When in your past relationships monogamous? Yes, but there was no temptation or anything. 
because I didn't talk to other girls. Hmm, it's sort of different, if you know what I mean. Is that a temptation for you right now? Not anymore. I don't want anybody else anymore. But I did have sex with someone a few days ago. It was pretty meaningless to me and didn't make me feel anything. It was only a few weeks before my flight, it broke my heart, I hated that he actually waited 3 days to tell me all about it, and he used the I wanted to find a good time to tell you excuse, when he literally told me that when I was at school and having an exam that day, he would have known if he actually paid attention to what I would tell him. It was a screenshot my friend Cal Neta accepted to share so I could put it here where he admits that he is aware of lying. Yeah. When I was like 18 to 22, I was a pretty close book. Like I do weird shit, like just tell lies for no other reason than habit. I enjoy just making stuff up randomly. I don't know what changed really. Maybe at the time it gave you the attention you liked so much. Well, I don't think so in that case, because I do it on the most tiny, inertious things that didn't matter or nobody noticed. I just had this weird relationship with honesty. Chapter 13 Drugs Issues Swim has this belief that he's as smart as a doctor by just reading stuff through the internet. He phrased it this way. For him, doctors are not trustworthy and we should try things out to find what's best for us. Antidepressants. When I first got in the US, my main luggage was lost. And thankfully he handled it well and we got it back the next day. It was concerning to me. <clears throat> It was concerning to me, because my meds were in the suitcase with my prescription, it was on antidepressants. He took one of his huge boxes of meds with a fuck ton of pills and got me pills telling me he had them and that if it wasn't the exact same drug, it was at least antidepressants. I honestly think it might have been antidepressants or maybe anti-anxiolytics, which are not the same, but it was definitely not the same meds I was using, because I felt something different in the way my body reacted. I felt dizzy and tired while being used to this medication. I don't know if it was. it is very serious and he was trying to help since I really needed my medicine and had no other way. I still feel like it should be noted. ADHD suspicions. I told to him about thinking I might have ADHD because I have some of the key symptoms. He told me I could try his meds when I would visit his place which are similar to Adderall. I told him I wouldn't blindly trust him because something like that was a huge thing that I usually don't like taking meds without diagnosis or prescription because I don't know anything about it. He then told me that what he needs in a partner is trust and that I heard him saying that I didn't 100% trust him and that it was just the Europeans that did not see things the same way and that we were kind of stuck up to procedural and that I should try things his way. It makes perfect sense to not want to try something that could be dangerous without understanding how it works well enough to know for sure that it's not dangerous. Thank you. But deferring to the knowledge of a doctor isn't something that I'd recommend in general. I mean a lot, and they don't know a lot of things. It's shocking how easy it is to get misdiagnosed. I guess so few of diagnoses are actually accurate, but it's a good idea to learn or ask questions. Do your own research, though. Flushed. I know Swim, and this is why I wouldn't blindly trust what you say, even though I'm pretty sure you invested time on your researches. It's just that I'm not even sure I have this disorder, and a month ago I did not even know that there were meds for it, so like, hmm, I don't want to take anything without knowing the effect it could have on me, and basically, if I got diagnosed, I know I'll need some time. But the Americans can go first, Americans, I can't believe I'm right there, sad emoji. I may be somewhat concerned, I need to think about it a little more. Wait, what about what? Swim, what do you mean? Oh, just, you were asking if I wasn't afraid that you might have mental problems. And now you are. Well, yes, but no. What do you mean? Sad face. Not the same ones you meant. Smiley face. What, because I don't want to take drugs? I asked him in the past if he was afraid of me having mental problems such as eating disorders and episodes of depression. 
No, Lamal. Without diagnosis, what then? Hmm. This is very difficult questions to answer in the way you're looking for. It's okay though. Don't worry about anything. Can I call you real quick? Because I don't understand what you mean and it's kind of scary. I can't explain it yet. But I promise it's not scary. Okay? Heart emoji. Sad face. Okay, I just got out. It's only... It's the kind of thing that... To be able to explain, I need to explain other things first. That's why I'm processing how best to do all that. They explain everything and I need to fill everything on the website. I see. Are you afraid that we might not be compatible? If I have ADHD, this kind of things? No, Lamal. Crying emoji. So do you still want me to come? And like, like me? I don't know. Sorry. I may be overreacting, but they made me turn off my phone before entering and like... I don't know, it made me anxious a little bit. Part of the screen might be confusing. At the same time, I was at the US Council to get info on visas and passports. But in case I wasn't, you could just tell me. You know that, right? I wish. Mm, I wouldn't need to, in case it wasn't. I could just figure out a way to fix it. I can do that, you know? Smiley face. Kid face. I feel better, thank you. I know this isn't how you see me yet. So this might not make sense to you yet, but it is literally nothing I can't do. I want to see that. By the way, about the visa update, I need to check every day on the website when there are appointments for them to grant visas. I don't know, I'll check when I arrive at work, but basically... I think we then talked about it a bit more and I changed my mind a bit. The second day I was there, on December 25th, he noticed, he convinced me to take the meds, saying how proud he was for me to drive find things that would help myself without taking into consideration the meds I was actually on. Well, of course, he did not force me into taking the meds. I want to point out he manipulated me into changing the way I view things by using my love for him and what he needs in a relationship, aka full trust. During the two extra weeks I stayed, I had my classes online and remote working during the night in Seattle time. I was so afraid of falling asleep or not being able to work well that I took his meds, which were actually amphetamines. At this point he had me convinced that the meds made me smarter and more functional. I was so scared to go back home and not be diagnosed with ADHD and not feel like I could be as good as I was when I was taking that. It was also helping much with my EDs, it made me anxious. It broke my confidence and made me feel dumb. When I got back to France, I contacted an old friend of mine who I know does drugs to see if he could help me find meds with amphetamines. The drugs Swim gave me are forbidden in France and not even given to people with ADHD. So getting it on not only would have been so hard and expensive, but super illegal. When I told him about it, he was so proud of me for taking actions into doing what's best for me. I'm honestly happy that my sad friend couldn't find a med anyway. I'm just sad to say that from the start I did not want to do that and it felt wrong. And eventually I fell into it. I felt like I needed it. And it made me believe it was just because of me being a European. I want to point out that he never forced me to take it at all. In the end I was the one asking for it because I felt super productive and I stopped forgetting things right away. But he indeed had a part into using my feelings for him to make me change my mind about all of this. He would give it to me every time I'd ask on the days I'd school and work. I also didn't know that ADHD meth contained amphetamines until I made research on it when I was back in France. This is how I realized it was illegal here, that it was a drug basically. I also want to point out that while I was on this, I felt very productive. By the way my work or classes would end, it would be 8, 9 in the morning in Seattle. I would then feel still super active and awake and would do some chores like tidying or cleaning the kitchen or the bathroom or getting the laundry and even his room sometimes when he would wake up which is weird because when I was watching his room sometimes I was thinking to myself I know he feels bad but I wish he would tidy it up himself I'm not his mom, it is not my role I would like to help but not do it for him LSD, TW, drug use before you get into that part, I want you to know that I've never had experiences with drugs in the past and tried weed once and hated it. I did smoke cigarettes and sometimes go back to it. I have an addictive kind of personality and would switch from cigarettes to coke zero to certain kinds of food, but that's all. 
He told me he had a first experience with LSD with a friend once and that he was gonna make it up again like five days before my plane. I was freaking out because I know nothing about hard drugs and he was like, oh no, no, that's chill. Done it once. I'm hoping we can try it together. I said no and he said, okay, I respect that. I'm gonna do it when you come here. He also knew I had had I have had I have a bad relationship with drugs and that it scared me from seeing my dad, cousins and ex-boyfriend turn really bad because of me. He then said he wouldn't do it because I'm here either if I don't want it. I guess so. Also, I'm probably gonna do some LSD sometime soon. LSD? Yeah, LSD. Like acid. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Drugs? Why? Yeah. Swim. Had a really good experience last time and tried some. Changed the way I thought about a lot of things. I think. You've had a bad experience with drugs. You mentioned with your family that it was really negative. Different texts are very different things. There are some healthy ones and some unhealthy ones. I definitely don't know much about drugs, but I know that with my addictive personality, I should definitely stay away from this. I'm reading about it as we speak. LSD? Yes, I can't judge because I've never been an alcoholic at all. LSD isn't addictive, really. But I used to drink until I was completely drunk. So I can understand, but the fact you want to use it proves that there's something inside that is hurt and that you want to forget, at least temporarily. No, not at all. This isn't that kind of drug. So I know you have this perception of drugs in general, like they should never be used, that they're just for suffering people to use. I don't like most drugs. I mentioned yesterday I think weed is a really dumb drug, and I didn't think very highly of it. It just makes you stupid and lazy and not want to get anything done. I think it's ridiculous that it's legalized in some places because it's a lot unhealthier than some of the hard drugs. I think drugs like weed that people get the ha into the habit of taking every single day can definitely lead to unhealthy situations where people get stuck in a loop. I really don't know where I'm standing right now, like, I'm having the worst day and I have a lot on my mind and now I have to worry about you using drugs. Haha, <laughs> it's not a worry. Trust me, babe. Heart emoji. Thanks for understanding with the LSD, I'm really happy that you understood. I started being aware of more ways my brain thinks after taking it the first time. I'm still worried, but I trust you into the into the way you're gonna do that. I know you'll make everything to be safe and yeah, as I ask you to find ways to understand yourself better and that doesn't mean we will have the time. I just want to know when you're gonna do it to be aware. <coughs> Eventually, when I was there, it was very distant at some point. He explained before that LSD would not get one addicted and just help seeing things differently. That I should try to read stuff about it, because it was a great way to see things differently. At that point I was reading more and more about it, because I felt it coming. Because he was asking me again and again. He insisted so many times, saying I would understand him better than eventually I did. Despite telling him that even if I changed my mind about how I viewed the use of LSD, I wasn't sure I wanted to try. Especially not the first time I came to the US and visited him. I did it. Because I was looking at him. Thinking he is the guy I love. And he is turning his back on me. He ignores me, he doesn't want to deal with me, and I want it back. <clears throat> Before we were high, I warned him at the beginning that if he ever had sex during LSD, and if I ever said I'm okay with his roommate watching us, that wouldn't count. I wouldn't, and I didn't want that to happen. Well, it still happened. I know I've done things before it happened, like getting my top off. I'd like to remind you that I was on drugs, and that before that, when I was still sober, I did express that I did not want something like this to happen. When the drugs started to kick in, Swim said that we were definitely having sex that night. I was honestly just confused at the moment, like, oh, okay. Telling this to my friends recently made them think that it was a very predatory behavior to have. And when we had high, I asked him, it was your plan all along, right? You were gonna make me do LSD anyway. And he said yes. I didn't have a very bad experience overall. I'm so happy I didn't go through a bad trip. I just remember being super anxious and taking it. While he was ignoring the shit out of me. 
He was not even to my side at first, like I did not exist, and I remembered what I read about how I could experience bad trip if I was in a bad place mentally. And trust me, I was. And now my body reacts with this plus the antidepressants. Thinking about it, it was honestly super dangerous considering I was super depressed and on meds. I could have had a very bad experience that could have left consequences on my health for the rest of my life. He put me in real danger that way. It was so weird. I would feel connected to him in a very strong way and see him as a god somehow. I would tell him things like, I know you want me to yourself. I know you want to control me. And he was so on the edge. I'm honestly wondering if this is what he was trying to achieve from the start. I know I may be connecting the dots easily, but I know he is very much into mind control. And I'm scared he tried to make his fetish a reality by using me. Chapter 14 About now March 6th, I finally cut ties. I decided to DM him to ask him to delete my intimate pictures, which he said sure. Thanked him, he said good luck, and it pissed me off. This and his attempt to maybe get into me with using his Discord server to show me he was looking for dating advice. This is our last conversation. Good luck. You don't really mean that. Actually, thank you for being distant and made me realize that you had control over me and that you manipulated me. I'm much better now. And all that happened between us, I see it from a clear eye now, and it changes everything. I'm not sure what to say. That's a really awful thing to say. I want to tell you that I'm sorry for giving you that impression, and I'm sure I messed up with whatever I did to make you feel that way about me. But I don't know if there's anything I can say that would make you feel differently. Um, I don't know. You have no idea how much it just hurt to see what you say that. Bye, Swim. This is the message that got him all over the place. This is the message that hurt him. This is what he presented to you as him being worried he might have hurt me. His first reaction was to tell me it was an awful thing to say. Not that I talked about manipulation, but never about gaslight. I actually learned that word recently and never used it with him, I think. So him using it in this case is interesting to me. After that, he immediately unmoded me on his Discord server and unfollowed me on Twitter, which is honestly pretty weird to me. Why not block him or at least soft blocking me? Anyways, rereading myself after that, I know he didn't want, not want to cut ties. He wanted me to keep a way to talk to me, probably. Talking to me was a way to assert his power over me. I blocked him because, as confident as I left sending him this to let him know that I was taking back my power. It felt like he was back in my head, like he had control over me, like I was his puppet. I felt bad. It felt like I was the one hurting him. He is so freaking good at gaslighting me. Please know that the person why I did not the reason why I did not try to talk with him about what I was upset about is basically because I was scared of him and felt unsafe. It felt like he could just easily manipulate me again. Only a few seconds chat was enough for me to put myself in his shoes and question everything. I want to make it very clear. Everything that I've written has happened. This is what I experienced for the three months I've been with him. Yet he had just his was yet he had just his was of being able to gaslight me very very well. He reached out to two of my close friends as a way to get more info on what has been going on, but also as a way to try to communicate with me through them, knowing they would probably let me know or show me the whole convos. He eventually tried to manipulate them and gaslight them as well, for example here. It doesn't sound like her. She knew I was feeling vulnerable today. She sent that after she messaged me in my Discord after seeing me tag everybody because I was feeling really bad. I did not know what to do. Maybe she's just upset about the relationship and whatever happened between you two. I'm sure she is. I mean, it wasn't the messiest breakup, but it was still a breakup. And there was still some hurt for both of us, for sure. Yeah, of course, that's how these things go. As far as awful shit, I don't know, it doesn't seem awful. It just looks to me like she's being honest about how she feels. Which is okay and fine, and of course you should do the same. It's just part of human interaction. You want me to make her feel bad? I don't want to do that. I literally did not say that. He went to Kelly the day I blocked him after not talking to her for a while. She did not want to tell how much she knew how much she knew to protect me. I was very hesitant to speak out as I said at the beginning. I don't have much to gain actually 
have a lot to lose. I'm scared of being potentially harassed by his community. I'm scared of maybe losing my right to be in the P RPP program. I'm scared of my friend's reaction to finding out this is a lot. Swim said during his stream he just wanted to understand what he did wrong and eventually be good friends again. Someone who would care for me wouldn't publicly give my name like this knowing I'm in a bad state. Causing people to potentially reach out to me with malicious attention. Only a few did, but having a flow of people mass following me just to keep up with the story was honestly so freaking anxious. I'm not a fan of him getting away with it, because I know for a fact that I'm not the first one nor the only one, and I don't want any other women or other people to suffer because of him. I think he is a predator that attacks vulnerable people. He feels dangerous to me, I'm scared, and this is why I was afraid to speak out. The reasons why I'm not taking legal action is because I don't live in the country where it all happens. Filling a police report is not as stressful as it is, so imagine doing it in a country that is not yours. I feel powerless. Survivors don't always want to go through the justice system, because we hear about other cases. We can't imagine how mentally draining it can be. I just want to break the abuse cycle, because as fast as he was done with me, he found another person to try to manipulate. This is not okay. Also, I don't want Swim to be in jail. I do think he seriously needs help and is ill though. That doesn't take back the fact he is a predator to me. When you do something wrong, you need to face consequences and may the support and spotlight he gets be the price for that. I also know how stupid and naive I can seem. I know how it can be seen as bad for me to leave my country to join someone that I fell in love with through the internet and go there by my own means while crossing the whole planet to meet him. But sadly, I believed in all of this. I honestly thought that yes, I could find love that way. I might look stupid, but I don't think that being stupid is wrong in any way. I did not harm anyone. I hope you don't judge me too much on that. Please don't put the blame on me. He did this to me and never asked for this. I tried to narrate all the events that have been happening. It's been super long to write. And I didn't even share how I was feeling about this all right now that much. Short responses, I'm traumatized, and yet I'm still processing. I feel like I wasn't myself, and this is very, very scary. It's a lot to go public with, with it, and I'm still processing not only what I've been through with him, but also the whole situation going public and his way of handling it. I've been reading back this document again and again for hours, making me relive some of awful events again and again. I'm just so afraid of missing any key points, it is mentally draining, I'm probably skipping some points but I don't wanna go through all this reading again, it's exhausting, you have no idea. One more time I want to make clear that my intention was never to get something cancelled, all I care about is making sure people might get safe and might feel empowered to share their stories as well. I'm on a safe space for women to be in and as scary as it might be, if I can ever help anyone coming forward or avoiding getting manipulated or abused, I am happy with it. Thank you for taking time to read, I just wish I could have decided whether or not I wanted to go public or not, and more time preparing this. Chapter 15 Another known victim Someone reached out to me after getting close to swim and noticing some red flags. They came up with the whole PDF of their experience with him, but this, with his live stream of yesterday, they are not comfortable speaking out anymore. They allowed me to share this though, they have been pressured to finish swim off despite not wanting to. Once they didn't fall for it and called him out second time, they felt bad and did it. He used the same balls pain as a way to get the partner in guilt and getting what he wants. He told them how he never had sex while being on LSD and how he would like to try it with them, which is an obvious lie. I'm outraged and sick to my stomach to know I'm not the only one. This is sickening and frightening. This is why speaking out is important. Spreading is caring. Awareness is protecting at our own scale. The final chapter. About proofs. I can see people coming at me for not enough proof. I'm not even going to bother adding the file of my recording of my Twitter and Discord DMs with Swim since he publicly talked about me. You know we've been talking to each other. I'll still have the records if needed. I want you to know that in many cases of abuse it is well known that most of the time you don't really have proof to plead your case. Swim is very very smart. He wouldn't do anything that leads us into proving what happened. Some people definitely saw me in Seattle, some definitely saw me crying one morning after me telling Swim how I was feeling unsafe. Someone definitely saw me high that night. I'd like to share this one with you for context. I was sending him pictures of parties while going to yoga. He then sent me a dick pic out of blue. I typed ZZZZZ 
and he tried to laugh it off and I, until I told him I was not happy about that. He instant, instantly deleted the pic and this, propor, and this portion of the text. You can see through these messages how he's turning the situation against me. Yes, it was 5 p.m. Z, 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 Z. That is not the kind of pic I asked for. I don't find that funny at all. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just gonna go back to bed. Good night. I don't want to feel like this anymore. Like what? I can call you if you want to talk about it. I... Question mark. I don't know if it will help. Call me, please. If you need a few minutes for you to tell me, but please, I didn't hear what you say before you leave, and we really need to talk about this. I just said I'm gonna go. Why? I couldn't even have space for my feelings, and despite almost crying on the bus receiving this picture, I tried to be there for you again while you hurted me. I just wanted to help feeling better. I was scared to ask for it, because I didn't want to feel worse, and now I feel even worse. Ask for what? Help and understanding. I don't understand. What you wanted to ask for when you woke up before sending the pic or like after when I called? Just now, when after hours I finally got up the courage to tell you that I needed help feeling better. So now you are telling me that, me finally expressing my feelings on how you acted and not erasing myself too much because I still did by calling and trying to understand what was wrong. You acted wrong, and if you feel bad it's because you know you did something bad. I'm sorry. And yet instead of trying to understand it, and like get in touch with me, it's all over again about how it made you feel bad when my feelings were hurt. What about how you acted? Are you even aware of it? Okay, well, tell me. That's communicating, you know. I can't know if you don't tell me what's wrong. What did I do? Swim. We need to have a conversation, like, right now. It's killing me. I feel bad. I can't. You feel bad. We need to talk about this. I try. Then tell me here. Write it. Because I can't stay in that place where I just don't know and nothing will be said and we'll just feel bad. It's too much. What is too much? Me talking about how it made me feel? I can't feel like this anymore. I'm sorry for being bad at communicating. I tried before and it never worked. You still need to try. I'm not even sure I read what I sent you while you were asleep so I'll put it back here. This still remains. I still mean it. I'm sorry for not understanding before. I understand now. You send me a lot of cute and sexy things to make me laugh and make me happy. I was just trying to do the same thing before. Look, I know you didn't try to intentionally make me feel bad. I know it was not a bad intention. What hurts me is that I explained to you many times that I'm not always on the mood. They have a huge trauma, and I won't react the same to things from one period to another, in the same day or weeks, whatever. So I asked you to try to see if I was in the mood. It can be asking frontly or these, but just slightly, not something so obvious, because it will make me feel very bad. I explained it to you so many times, and it hurts me that you didn't listen enough to understand, because when you tell me something I do wrong, I immediately try to understand and change it or make it up for it. When you feel bad, I ask you questions, to understand you, and even tonight I did. Here you could have asked things, I didn't even, even say all the things I needed to say still, because we hung up, and I don't know, if you see what I mean? Yeah. It just feels like when I tell you that you did something wrong, you just don't try to understand why it was. You don't try to ask me questions to understand me better. I feel the same way. What matters is your feelings even when I tell you did something wrong. About me? Yeah. You feel like I don't ask you questions to try to understand you? You really hurt me today in ways that I communicated. I really had emotional problems with it. And even though you knew you hurt me, you ignored it and only tried to ask about it hours later. The thing is... Like the time you said that me saying you didn't make me feel safe made me you uncomfortable. I think that this is all on me. 
I call you out on something you did, but it triggers my trauma. I'm not saying it's all on you. And I have to be the one to cheer you up and understand you. I know you struggle with understanding what can make people happy and you do things without meaning it wrong or mean. I do, but can I have a place to say that? It happened many times and I told you many times. I was on my way to yoga when you said that and I was trying really hard not to cry on that goddamn bus. I needed time away, so I focused on my yoga without answering because I needed this time to myself swim, to cool down after what just happened and see it with a step back. I didn't want to say things that I could have regret. You would have known if you asked me how I felt about what happened, but you didn't. When I called you, I did not even tell you I feel bad. You made me feel bad. I told you what's going on. I lit. Put your feelings before mine. Every goddamn time. And it seems like you don't notice it. Even now. As I really need to call to talk about it. I'm just typing things here. Because I know you like it better that way. Not only I put a lot of effort to adapt to the situations of us being far and you being busy. But I even put on a lot of efforts. And things like that happen without even being sure you notice it. You have no idea how many times I wanted to talk to you about how I felt and didn't because I knew you would start your stream. I just er erase myself for you. Then it sounds like this isn't good for either of us. So that's where you wanted to go with this conversation. The thing is, it seems like I'm the only one trying to talk about serious things like that. What do you mean this isn't good for any of us? I'm the only one talking here. I'm sorry for everything. Maybe it doesn't feel like it, but I really try to open up. So I'm, I don't want you to give up. I don't know what to do. I can't feel like this anymore. And I hate hurting you. Swim, I love you. Do you love me? I can't believe you felt you had to explain to me that I hurt you before. I feel so bad over it. I know I made a mistake. I'm sorry. This is what I was trying to explain. That it happening again made me feel like I had to talk about it. Again, you did not answer. Do you love me? I can't feel anything right now. The only thing I know how to do when this happens to me is to turn off my feelings. And this is what I offer you. This is your coping mechanism. And I'm not gonna cross over that. If you want, we can take a bit of time to think about all of this and talk about it with a clear mind when we feel a bit better. We don't have to make a decision yet about anything. If you want me to stay and talk with you, I will. If you want us to take a bit of time, I will wait. If you want something else, I'll tell, let you tell me. I think that would be best. I... I just don't know right now. Then like the other time, we can get along with our lives and talk later. My coping mechanism is the only reason I've been able to text. What do you want to do right now? Do you want me to stay or do you want to, us to talk later? I think we should talk later. The end. Next, book two. Other experiences. Thank you for listening.